Well hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to be making some rye bread or Polish rye bread actually um, and this has rye flour and strong white bread flour in it. If you, if you were to make a loaf with only rye flour you end up with a very heavy dense loaf because rye flour doesn't have much gluten so you get something like pumpernickel. But for this uh, one the uh, white bread flour uh, adds the gluten which allows the, the bread to uh, the dough to develop more and you get a, a, a lighter loaf. It will still be quite dense but it's a, it's a much lighter loaf and easier to eat basically. Uh, and the ingredients are 500 grams of, uh, sorry, 450 grams of flour and that is uh, 225 grams of white flour at the bottom, strong white bread flour, that's one and three quarter cups and 225 grams of rye flour, that's this flour on the top here and that's two and a quarter cups. Then I have 140 millilitres of lukewarm milk and 140 millilitres of lukewarm water and that's uh, so that you can put your finger in and it, it doesn't actually burn. Um, and then you have uh, seven grams or two teaspoons of active dry yeast. I have one and a half teaspoons of caraway seeds, which is optional, but I like the flavor of caraway seeds, so that's fine. I have a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of honey. And the first thing I'm going to do is to put the honey into The lukewarm water and I'm going to stir that around to dissolve it a little bit and then I'm going to add into that the active dry yeast and stir it around And then I'm going to leave that for 10 minutes to start to activate. And that should uh, froth up as it activates and then it will be ready to use. As you can see the yeast is activated, it's frothed up nicely. So I've put my two flowers into a large bowl and I'm going to put the caraway seeds in and the salt and I'm just going to mix those around and then into that I'm going to pour the yeast mixture and the milk and then I'm going to knead those ingredients into a dough and it will be a, a very sticky dough at first. And I'm going to get my hand in so that I can pull that together.
And you have to work this quite hard because uh, the rye flour is very, very dense. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip that out, including all these dry bits. And I'm going to knead that for 10 minutes. And get all of that incorporated. become quite tacky as it gets incorporated and you may have to put a little bit of extra flour on the work surface but we have to knead it quite hard for 10 minutes So I found using two hands is easiest with this very tough dough and I've kneaded that for ten minutes. It's got a very slight spring to it, not very much, but a little bit. And with that, I'm actually going to put that into a lightly greased bowl. I'll put it in upside down first of all, work it round so that the surface gets covered with the little bit of the oil and I'm going to cover that with uh, plastic wrap and I'm going to let it prove for two to three hours until it's doubled in size and then when it's doubled in size I'll come back and we'll go on to the next step. The dough has uh, been rising now for um, almost three hours and it has doubled in size and I could actually um, hear this dough making a noise as it was rising. It was just clicking a little bit. And it's got a bit of a spring to it. So I'm going to just tip that out onto the work surface, which I've lightly floured. And I'm going to knock the air out of it like that. And then I'm going to knead it for a couple more minutes, maybe two minutes. And then I'm going to form it into a bowl. Or a bowl. I'm actually going to form it into an oval shape. And I'm going to pinch the seam together like that on the underside. And then I'm going to put that onto a baking tray. And I'm going to leave that, I'm going to cover it uh, with a damp towel or you could use uh, cling film but not tight, you need a, a loose so that this has uh, room to expand. And I'm going to let it double in size again. 
and then as it's almost doubled in size I would preheat my oven to 220 Celsius, 190 Celsius with a fan, 430 Fahrenheit and then it will be ready to bake but I'll come back and show you what we do before we put it in the oven. So our loaf has um, doubled in size on the baking tray and I have my oven preheated at 220 Celsius, 190 Celsius with a fan, uh, 430 Fahrenheit. So what I'm going to do is with a, a knife I'm going to score a line on one side and do the same on the other side as well. like that and then I'm just going to take some flour and I'm just using the white bread flour and sprinkle a little bit over the top like that and I'm going to put that in the oven and bake it for 25 to 30 minutes until uh, when I tap the, the underside of the loaf it sounds hollow that indicates that it's cooked right through so I'll be back with you um, when I've taken it out of the oven and I've allowed it to cool down uh, the rye bread has baked and I baked mine for about 28 minutes it sounded hollow underneath I've taken it out and let it cool down quite a bit it's still slightly warm actually but I couldn't wait to cut into it to see what it would, was like and this is what it looks like and I've already had a little taste without butter but now I've got some with some spread on it is dense as I said it would be <coughs> excuse me it is dense as I said it would be but it's very easy to chew it has that lovely caraway seed flavor if you if you wanted to use caraway seeds and it really is very nice indeed um, and I got this recipe from the bread kitchen which is a website of Titley Nihan where she recommends that you eat this with smoked cheese or smoked ham or something like that um, but I think it would be ideal uh, with almost anything and I shall uh, have this uh, with some ham and a salad sandwich basically so I hope you've enjoyed this recipe and if you have please give me the thumbs up below the video and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel in the top right hand corner of the screen there will be an eye that you can click on to take you to the recipe and I'll put a link to it below the video as well and I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future. So until then, happy baking.